fish this pretty. So we're back again and uh, yeah we'll be challenging grizzly bears on this trip. Uh, more than likely we'll be running into them and all the elements. Here we are camped in uh, in the with the boat tent and remote coastal estuary and can't wait for tomorrow and hopefully get some more coastal chrome. Two years ago we caught one. And you hooked one. Yeah. So if we can beat that, maybe that's the goal for tomorrow. Catch yeah. one each. Here, cheers. Yeah. Some Baileys in there. <sighs> so we've got northern lights. We've got a wolf over here talking to us. Importantly, we have each other. That guy's persistent, man. This river, I've fished once before with Rob two years ago, so we gave it a year to rest. And last time we were here, we were sight fishing for them. So if we could, we're going to be really diligent, peering over the sides of the banks and and seeing if we can spot anything. Chances are, in this clear water, all the fresher fish are going to be seeking refuge in this kind of the hard chop. So that's kind of what I'm gonna concentrate my efforts on. But if we do see a fish, it'd be cool to watch one chase your fly in like we got to see last year. Hey, hey, hey. I had to crunch out a dookie in the woods and um, we came to this run. Lo and behold, we're anchored out here in this super remote river. A float plane lands with three guys this morning. So all of a sudden, we're sitting there having our coffee and oatmeal. All of a sudden, it's a scramble to get our waders on. I didn't even have time to crunch out a dookie. We get here to this first nice choppy looking run and uh, I'm like, Rob, you gotta f give me the toilet paper. You fish that. He goes to cast. Sorry, he goes to pull the fly out of the end of his rod, breaks the tip of his rod, has to go back to the vehicle. I finish a nice relaxing deuce. I come in here, I don't know, how long was I working that for? Like five minutes? All of a sudden my fly stops dead, and I could feel some head shaking. He jumped, like what, 10 times? Easy. <laughs>
fifth swing through that run. First run of the day. through that run and it was just like my fly just stomped. I was like, that ain't bottom. See him there? Is a hog. Look at that freaking fish, man. Holy big male. Let's check out the hook set here. He wasn't going anywhere. Right in the corner of the yapper. Pop that out. Oh, yeah. My little pink marabou special. You can learn how to tie those on my YouTube channel. But in, let's look at this gorgeous, gorgeous fish. So this steelhead, I'd say it could be in the four or five year class. Big male, well fed. Check out the girth of his tail. He probably hasn't been in the system very long because the males usually cover color up a lot more than this when they're getting close to spawning. So I'm just going to give him a chance to catch his breath, move him out of the uh, muddy water. Right over here to this clear stuff. And you can come and get a nice look at this gorgeous creature. That's got to be over 15 pounds or around the 15 pound range. Just stunning. And on the, oh man, that was all on an eight weight single hand rod. So on the other side, you can see he's got a couple battle wounds right there. Not sure what happened to him, but you know, he's had to put up with the struggles of life like we all do. Probably a sea lion, seal. And he's ready to go, so I'm gonna let him go. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm just beside myself right now and we'll see how many more we can catch before Rob gets back up here with this rod and then uh, we'll double that and the size of the fish to make him twice as jealous jealous so yeah <laughs> right on let's go pound some more water I don't know Roberto it looks good from up here I see like 10 swimming away from your fly If you want to go Got to yep. find a way <laughs> If you want to go 
There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find a home. You hit like a steelhead. Got to hit your heart. They're gorgeous, man. If you want to love. Got to hit your heart. If you want to love. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find your home. Dangled it off one of these branches and then down. It's funny because I worked this harder earlier. Now I was kind of just giving it more of a surgery. Could have moved in though, Brenda. Looks like a mail thread. Fire truck? I don't know about fire truck. He's got, he's got a bar though. Oh yeah, there it is. Another big fish. I thought it was bottom first. I don't see it was just pulling and pulling and yeah. Whoa, look at him. He didn't like seeing me. That's a big fish. People like the mint. I don't know. Just the colored ones add more character. More character. <laughs> it's so amazing how, like, a small little creek like this will have just monster fish in it. You're like, you're casting away, casting yeah. away. It just seems like there's like nothing here, nothing here. Then all of a sudden, boom! A huge oh, no. fish. That one I was not anticipating anything. World. I go, okay, I fished this already. Yeah. Why am I doing this again? Yeah. My cast suck. I'm bouncing up these. All I can do is lose a fly. I'm losing flies like every other cast out here. I'm going, man, oh man. I can just see him there. The broken tip. Doesn't have that flip. More of a halibut rod now that you broke yeah. the tip off of it. Well, the tip's still there. It's just the eyelet. It's come off before, and I glued it again, and it's to pop again. I even put it in the case last night. You did? Yeah. And you still broke it? Oh, what's in here? Yeah, he brought it. Oh. <laughs> right in here. Here's the spot. Bring him into the whisperer here. I'll tail him, tail him for you. You can say hi to this beautiful creature. Take a photo. Brag with all your friends. See him there? Come here, big guy. Come here. Come here, big fella. Once you get his head turned onto his side, if you can. Holy smoke. Thing's got shoulders, dude. Got him. Wow. Wow. Look at the size of this thing. You ready to put up a boot? <laughs> the real boot. Holy big slab boats. He's been in here for maybe a little bit, but sometimes the males come in kind of covered. Got to choose your way. <laughs> if you want. Are you a better person now? I don't know, probably not. Right. <laughs> Harassed that fish and got pure enjoyment out of hooking him in the mouth and watching him struggle and rithel. It's weird obsession. Yes, it is. But it's cool to just see those fish and know that they exist. It's like, I always feel like it's, there's something, 
like magical that happens when you hook one in here because it's like why are they here it doesn't know. seem like a creature like that should could exist here you know 15 pounds it's sitting in a tiny little creek this creek should be for coastal cutthroat or yeah, little like rainbows is big. what you're envisioning and you walk by here and you say there's no way there's a fish that big in there and what do you know nice job that's a well i mean that's a couple fish that's awesome yeah. got to choose your way if you want to change there ain't nobody gonna do it for you got to find your own way <laughs> I was wondering why it was giving me such a hard time. It's because it's a big, chrome, beautiful fish. Nice hook set. Look at that thing, man. Mitch the cool guy shades. Wow. Wow. Big male down low, big chromer. This is the fish of my life, I think. Like, Every time I, you pass a piece of water like that, you're like, ah, there could be something there, but it's like really shallow, really choppy. And it's like, I bet you 90% of people, I bet you 99% of people would Walk never like even that. bother putting a fly in there. It was one of those things that I'm like, chrome fish sitting in the, the hard chop, shallow water moving in. I said that would be my strategy from the get-go and my strategy has just paid off. But that is a big, healthy look at the look at the colors on its back it's almost still like that black sort yeah, of like coho colors coho kinda. yeah that is what you stay up late at night anchored in a bay dreaming of you don't see too many fish this pretty wow that's the fish i just finished saying that was the fish of my trip that is the fish of my trip wow so this girl has been really good to me the last three steelhead I've caught have been on this fly. Just beat to crap. The hook's dull as dull it can be. So I'm retiring this. I'm gonna frame it in a photo of 
some of these fish and I'm going to purple. And I am willing to wager that the steelhead don't really give a crap if this is in front of their face or this is in front of their face. But, I'll, but we'll, we'll, we'll put that theory to the test. That is a very amazing technique. I would love to see you hook a fish like that. The old behind the back, under the log trick. Gets them every time. He hooks one. My prediction is rod breaks and he falls in. And we have to save him. So we're coming up the trail. And I spotted this. Rob spotted a fish that came out a better look. We just counted 14 steelhead right down here. There could be more. Some are mint, some are dark. They're definitely not spawning there because it's all sand. They're just kind of hanging out. Probably... I don't know what they're doing there. But what we're going to try to... Rob's going to go upstream, cast down. And we're seeing if we can't get one chasing his fly. And get the take on the camera, so give you a quick look at these things. It's freaking amazing. I could watch them forever. Today, wow, ups and downs, highs and lows. Um, was on a big high this morning, woke up in the boat, nice calm night, it stayed in place with the anchor as, as it should. And then we hear an airplane uh, circling overhead and uh, back and forth, back and forth, and then it lands and proceeds to come into this remote creek. It takes us hours to get here by highway, by boat, by hiking. and. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, some other fishermen just happened to come in by float plane. So we ended up having to share the river with them, but that was fine. Um, still was a, a good success. And yeah, the, some of the lows, um, first uh, pool ended up breaking my uh, spay rod. Well, that was uh, a bit of a downer. So I had to run back to the boat, grab another one, come back again. But the good thing was my uh, good buddy, Captain Quinn, uh, ends up slamming a big... Uh, Big steelhead, big buck in uh, the first pool, which uh, was a good start to the day. One of the highlights for me was uh, sight fishing for, for steelhead. Got pretty excited and then look up river and there's more. There's another one, another one, another one. I couldn't hold my emotions in anymore. It was so exciting. They say, you're in, you're in. 
I uh, was about to get them out of the pool so we didn't spook the other ones and yeah, end up coming unbuttoned and uh, that's the way it goes. But yeah, great day exploring, uh, good company and good weather today. And uh, yeah, just love being out here on these remote systems and doing some exploring. And, and then now, uh, yeah, always uh, looking forward to tomorrow's adventure which always keeps you going. I uh, got a bit more of a boat ride to go and uh, we'll get psyched up and ready for tomorrow and hopefully uh, have some more fish. Question, the question is, how come uh, commercial or recreational ocean fishermen never catch steelhead? Steel and the answer we just resolved, we just figured it out, is that sometimes they do. I have a friend who was trolling for tuna, skipping a jig off the surface, 200 miles off of the coast of, I think it was Mexico or California, and he's holding up a 25 pound steelhead that they caught. And then you're, you just deducted that everyone trolling in the ocean is trolling 20 feet or deeper. Yeah. But the steelhead swim on the, the surface. First five feet of the water, 10 feet of the water column. Yeah, probably five to 15 feet of the water column, so they're not down deep. Because on the commercial fisheries, when they're trying not to intercept steelhead, they make sure they run a weed line or a drop line that's down well below the surface so those steelhead can just swim right through. Brilliant. So We're way smarter than we look. Figured it out. Figured it out. Solving the world's problems. Mysteries. One couple of dailies at a time. There's one for... Fish are up. Oh, the camera here. Net marks or seal marks or something on them. Great day, while we're, while we're stuck here, waiting for the high tide. <laughs> high and dry. We are officially stranded in the middle of nowhere, with wolves calling off in the distance. No way of getting our boat unstranded. Rob in his typical Rob fashion allowed us an extra three liters of gas as wiggle room, so 
when we do try to get back across, we may run out of gas. We have to wait for the tide to come in. The wolves are howling, and there's a big dead sea lion over here on the beach. So, you know, things could be better. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out all our other videos. I'm Captain Quinn. See you around.